Hello, my friends. Let's talk about the Gradle. Android build system compiles app resources and source code and packages them into an APKs or Android app bundles that you can test, deploy, sign, and distribute. Android Studios and uh, uses the Gradle, an advanced build toolkit to automate and manage the build process while allowing you to define flexible custom build configurations. If you want to learn Android app development and start publishing your own apps, as thousands of people did, join our Udemy bestseller and higher rated course with a free coupon in the description below. Each build configuration can define its own set of codes and resources while reusing the parts common to all version of your app. The build, the Android plugin for Gradle works with the Android build toolkit to provide processes and configurable settings that are specific to building and testing Android applications. So the Gradle and the Android plugin run independently of Android Studio. This means that you can run your own apps, your Android apps with, from within Android Studio, the command line on your machine or on machines where Android Studio is not installed. So you can use this Gradle and build Gradle toolkit. Now, the build process. The build process involves many tools and processes that convert your project into Android application package apk or android app bundle aab the, the the build process is very flexible so it's useful to understand some of what is happening under the hood in this example like the compilers then the dex file compiled resources and debug release request to the k store to the apk packager and then the debug or release the apk so how this build process of typical Android app model works. The first step, the compilers convert your source code into DEX, Dalvik executable files, which includes the byte code that runs on Android devices and everything else into compiled resources. Then the packager combine, combines the DEX files and the compiled resources into APK or AAB, depending on the chosen build target, before your app can be installed on an Android device or distributed to store, such as Google Play, the APK and ABB must be signed. The packager signs your APK or AAB using the either the debug or release key store. So, if you are building a, a debug version of your app, this, that is an app you intend only for testing and the profiling. The packager signs your app with the debug key store. Android Studio automatically configures new projects with a debug key store. If you are building a release version of your app that you intend to release extreme, uh, externally, like uh, to Play Store, then to create, uh, then the packager signs your app with a, a release of KStore and that you need to configure. The last thing before generating your final APK, the packager uses the zip align tool to optimize your app to use less memory when running on devices. At the end of the build process, you can either debug or release the APK or ABAB for your app that you can use to deploy, test, to re or release to external users. Now, let's move to Android Studio and learn about the build Gradle and build uh, the app model and the project model files. So, we go to Android Studio and here we go to the Gradle scripts. We have these scripts and we are interested in understanding the build.gradle, which is a project model, which is a project level, and the build.gradle model, this is the model level. Okay, so we have project level and the build.gradle, which is an app and a model level. 
So we have two files that we are interested in understanding them, the top level and the app level model. Okay, so the top level build.gradle file located in the root project directory it defines the build configurations that apply to all modules in your project. By default, the top level build file uses the build script. This is the build script block to define the Gradle repositories and dependencies that are common to all your models in your project. The following code snippet, a code sample, describes the default settings and the DSL element that you can find in the top left. So, the build, uh, the build script block is where you can configure the repositories and dependencies for Gradle itself, meaning you should not include dependencies for your models here. Okay, so the build script here, we can define the, the Gradle and dependencies for all your project, but single projects are not uh, and repositories are not allowed to implement in them here. Okay. The repositories block configures the repositories Gradle uses to search or download the dependencies. The Gradle pre-configures the support for repositories such as JCenter, Maven Central, Google, and Ivy, and, and much of these configurations. If you want to learn Android app development, go to Udemy and search for Android. You will get my course as a bestseller course, the complete Android 12 developer course, Mastering Android. Click on it. You are, you're gonna learn how to build 60 apps from scratch with rating 4.4 and the bestseller. And this course is about 86 hours on video demand. Okay. Covering all the topics with 47 sections and about 40, 463 lectures at the, at the time of uh, recording this video. So we are expanding this course and we are adding new tutorials every week. So are you ready to become a professional developer with this course? Join now. You can also use the repositories or define your own remote repositories. The code here defines the, J the, the Maven Central and the Google repository. The dependencies block. So we have the repositories block and the dependencies block. The dependencies block configures the dependencies Gradle needs to use to build your project. The following adds the Android plugin, Android Gradle plugin, which for Gradle version 7.0.4. The Task clean. This is the, the for the building for the project, and we have all project. We can add the all project script, which uh, is not presented here, uh, but we can add it. Is where you configure the repositories and dependencies used by all models in your uh, project, such as third part plugins or library. But till now, it's we are good. We have learned about the repositories and the dependencies tags. Now let's move to the uh, to the uh, the app level Gradle file. The model level build file, Gradle file, located in each project model directory. The Gradle script. If we project and we select the Gradle, and allows you to configure the build settings uh, for a specific model it is located in. So this will be used to configure the settings and the models for a specific model. So build settings and configurations for a specific model. Configuring these build settings allow you to provide custom packaging options, such as additional build types and the product flavors and override settings in the main app manifest or top mod, top level uh, build a Gradle file. So let's see the sections of this file. The first line in the build configuration applies the Android plugin for Gradle. 
So this would be applying the plugins. What are the plugins, which is the ap application, okay? That makes the Android block available to specify Android specific build options, okay? So these are very important. The Android block, so this is the Android block. So we have the plugins, the Android and the dependencies. The Android block is where you configure all your Android specific build options. For example, the compile SDK, compile SDK specific or specifies the app, Android app, API level, Gradle sh that should use to compile your app. This means that your app can use the API feature included in this API level, which is 31 and lower. The build tools version, you can specify them here, but we are interested in the default configuration. And we have seen this, the target SDK and the version code and the version name and so the default configuration, the default configuration block encapsulates default settings and entries for a build variant and can override some attributes in the main Android manifest dynamically from the build system. You can configure product flavors to these values for different versions of your app. So, for example, the application ID. The application ID uniquely identifies the package for publishing. However, your source code should still reference the package name defined by the package attribute in the Android, Android manifest. And we have talked about this in the Android manifest uh, lesson and that we have said that the package here should be equal to this in order to prevent any possible error. Now, the minimum SDK defines the minimum API level required to run the app and the target SDK specifies the API level used to test the app and the version code defines the version number of your app and this should be uh, different for if you published an app that is version one and you are going to make an update you should specify it like number two okay you should uh, define the version and update the version of the number of your app. And the version name is here that defines a user-friendly version name for your app that may be uh, described by opening uh, the app information or in the go uh, or displaying an extra details in the Play Store. Okay. Now the build types. Build types block is where you can configure multiple build types. By default, the build system defines two build types, the debug and the release. Debug build type is not explicitly shown in the default build configuration, but it includes the debugging tools. Okay. And it is signing it with the debug key. The release build type applies ProGuard settings like this, this the release. So we have talked about the debug and now we are going to uh, talk about the release, which is the build type applies ProGuard setting and not signed by default. So this is the ProGuard setting and the Minify enabled, which is in shrinks the uh, shrinking uh, the using the Minify enabled. So by default, Android Studio configures the release debug, uh, build type to enable shrinking using mini Minify enabled and specifies the default ProGuard. This is the ProGuard settings. And here we have the, if, we, if you can add the uh, product flavors and so on. And this is the compile options and they are must be including the Java version, version 1 underscore and the dependencies, this is the most important part that we are going to work and we see it in many projects later on in this project, in this.